This is how to turn any website into a profit making machine on autopilot. So welcome to profitcopilot.com. Before we get into today's lesson, take a look at this. This is how I got over 30,000 website visitors to my website every single day for free. If you want to know how I did it, click the link in the description or go to profitgopilot.com slash traffic. Okay, so today we're going to take a deep dive into one of my students' websites. This is Sam. She's a member of my group coaching program. She reached out to me for help with her website. And I find this kind of project to work on very inspiring because, while there are a few issues with this website, Sam has done an incredibly good job, excuse me, a good job of getting up and running. So I am inspired to take a deep dive into her website, look at the problems, look at the things that she could be doing better and then document it. So not only Sam can improve what she's doing and hopefully make some more money from it, but also you guys can benefit from this as well. So this is Sam's website. It's Urban Gardener. And before we take a deep dive into how to fix the problems that she's facing, and I'm going to guess you're facing similar problems too, if you're watching this video, before we take a deep dive into that, I'm going to map out the strategy so everything is crystal clear, because I know that it is tempting to distract yourself with things like fads and various tools and strategies that might not be leading you in the right direction. Now, what is the right direction? It's profit. If it's not leading you towards profit, then you're going in the wrong direction. And you can do all the social media posting. You can get involved in TikTok and Instagram and this and that. But unless you have the engine, the system built first that is geared towards profit, then what's going to happen? Absolutely nothing. You might get traffic, you might get traction, but you ain't going to profit from it. So let's get the fundamentals done first and done right. And then you can start focusing on driving traffic. Because honestly, when you know how it's done, driving traffic is actually the easy bit. So let's get it. Let's get everything done right first. So let me map out the strategy. This is how, to, how you can build a profit machine. And if you already have a website, then you're, you're already a good few steps ahead of most people who want to start. So the first thing it really starts with is content. So a content page. Thankfully, Sam has got many content pages that she can use. So what you need to do is think of each content page as, as a line hook with a piece of bait on the end. And the more lines you have out there, the more pieces of content you have out there, the more chance you have of catching fish. Now, this is an analogy by Cam Jennings, uh, and I'm, I'm taking it from him, but I am giving credit because it works really well. So you think of each, each one of each piece of content that you create as a line, a fish line that is designed to pull in bait, uh, pull, pull in fish or in this case sales. So we can have multiple pieces of content out there just like Sam does. And what we're going to do is focus really just on one of these for the moment because they all work in the same way. Now, each piece of content that you have needs to have a couple of core components. One of those is uh, an opt in form. So here I'm going to drag on an, uh, a pop up page. So when someone lands on the piece of content, we can present them with this form in the form of a pop up, or we can have it embedded directly on the page itself. If you want to see how I do it, I do both. So when someone lands on my website, they'll get a pop up asking them to opt in, but I also embed the form directly in the page itself. This is going to increase your conversions. So this opt in form is to build an email list. And if you're not building an email list, 
oh boy, are you missing out. So this is what's really going to give you the maximum amount of profit in your business. It really is your email list. So the flow works like this. People land on your content page. They have an opportunity to opt in to your email list and then they are subscribed to your email list. If you do not have this flow built on every single piece of content you have out there, you need to go back and work on your content pages. This is about as simple as it gets. It's also the most profitable that it gets. Now we're going to talk about how to get people to opt in to your email list in a couple of minutes. But what happens once they're on your email list? Okay. So I know it's going to be tempting to sell to them immediately. Try to recoup your investments as quickly as possible. And that's usually a smart thing, but with email marketing, we need to build trust. So what we do on the very first day, the very first email they receive from you should give them the free gift that you promised them to, to get them to sign up to your email list. It's called a lead magnet because it attracts leads into your business. So the very first day they receive the lead magnet. Now you can monetize that lead magnet in a few different ways, which we can get into in a separate video. If you want me to make that content for you, tell me in the comments. Otherwise we need to add a wait trigger to your emails. So the first day they get the lead magnet, the thing you promised them, and then we wait a day on the second day, we send them another email. And now we're going to deliver more value. So we're going to increase the trust and we're going to do this for a few days. Now, really by day three or day four, this is when you start thinking about monetizing the email sequence and listen, all this is automated. So when you have this set up right, it just runs as an automated passive income machine. And then all you have to do is focus on sending traffic to your pages. And it is as simple as that. So yes, there is a short delay, a three or four day delay between the time someone subscribes to your email list and you profit from that subscriber. But you will make much more money in the long run if you follow this format instead of trying to make as much money as quickly as possible from people who don't know, like, or trust you. And this whole process from the content to the lead magnet to delivering value across multiple days is to engineer that like, know, and trust factor that you need in order to make money on the internet. Think about how many times have you handed over your money to someone you don't know, like, or trust. You just don't do it. So nobody is going to do that with you. And that's why we use this type of system and all the social media posts in the world will be nowhere near as effective as having a system built like this. So let's take a look at what Sam is doing and then let's correct a few things. So first of all, what really leaps out to me here is well, multiple course action. That's not a good starting point because we really want to keep things really focused. So people have absolute clarity about what they need to do next. Also, we've got the wrong year listed here, which is a minor mistake, but we really want to be making sure that the copy is the best it possibly can be. So here, this is a call to action to an, um, an opt in form to a lead magnet. If we click on that, we're going to get the six secrets to successful campaign, um, companion planting. So I'm going to predict, and I haven't asked Sam this yet. This is actually my next question for her, is what is the conversion rate on this page? My guess is it's going to be pretty low. So there are a few things that we can do to increase 
the conversion rate. Number one, show the end result. That's probably the, the fastest, easiest way to get conversions. Just show people the end result, what, what they want, and then speak to them on their own level where they are right now. And the most effective way to do that is to address their current problems and concerns. This is going to build rapport really quickly. Now, this is not a copywriting video. If you want me to go into more detail on how to write effective copy, let me know in the comments because my squeeze pages, my landing pages typically convert around 60%, which is exceptionally high, but I have been doing this for a long time. So if you want more details on that, tell me in the comments, but quick overview on how to boost conversions here. Focus on the big problem, the single big problem that your audience is currently facing. Call it out. And then state how it feels. So we need to appeal to two parts of the brain here. We need to appeal to logic and emotion. When we appeal to both of those, then we get increased conversion. So sure, call out the problem that's essential, that's going to appeal to the logic, but then we focus on the emotion. And that's going to build rapport. It's going to get people to really feel like you understand them and the problem. And then we make a promise of it. Doesn't have to be like this. There is a solution and we give helpful, helpful information here in the copy that will demonstrate that you know what you're talking about. So a good way to do that is to call out common myths, bust those myths, make the process simpler, give them brand new information. You can even brand something as a new system that nobody has seen before. And that is a very effective way to get conversions. And then one of the big things here is the form. So I would say, keep this form above the fold. If they have to scroll, well, that's like putting a hurdle or a barrier in front of people. They have to scroll down in order to get what they want. You don't want them to do that. People, are lazy for the most part, right? I certainly am. And if I have to scroll on a web page in order to get down to see what's going on, that takes just a little bit more effort, but really you want it to be seamless. So put the opt in form this bit above the fold. Okay, listen, we could talk about this stuff for hours, but let's go back to the web page because there's a lot to get through here. So, very first thing is the lead magnet smart, very smart of you, Sam, to put that front and center because that is really your profit engine here. However, when we scroll down here, we have the offer of a 56 page ebook. Now, if we click on this, it's going to take us to the sales page. If it loads up fast, that's one thing that you've got to be cautious of page speed. This is running a little bit slow. So maybe start using a caching plugin, Sam, if you're watching. WP total cash, one of those very good, very good caching plugins out there that will speed up your website. Anyway, here we have a sales page. Now the sales page here comes in way too early. So if we go back to the profit machine system that we're building, Really, if we, if we go down here, we, we really want to be seeing the sales page. Oops, I have to add a product first. Okay, let's add that in now. Okay, so really we want to be seeing the sales page, you know, day three or day four. That's the right time in this sequence to, to send that promotional email. Because when we do it right here, at the very top of the funnel, as people just begin to encounter you, what's going to happen is immediately they're going to become defensive. You haven't delivered enough value yet. You haven't really earned the right to ask them for the sale at this stage. So that's why we have the sequence. That's why we have the content, the email sequence running to build that trust. And that's going to get you far, far higher conversions than just running this page directly to cold traffic. Cold traffic is traffic that doesn't know, like, or trust you. So we need to warm them up through the process that we have and then make them hot. When they're hot traffic, they're ready to buy. 
by the end of this phase, at the, the end of this, this sequence, the day three or four, they should be pretty hot and ready to buy. So I would encourage you, Sam, to put all your, your focus onto building this email list. Okay, if we go down and let's take a look at the actual website. Okay, there are a few problems here. So first of all, if we click on this image, it's going to take us to a page not found. We want to avoid that. Okay, and then we have these uh, additional sections. That's okay. It's not too bad. Now, let's take a look at the navigation bar at the top because we've got a couple of missed opportunities here. The first one is we want to promote the lead magnet here. So we want to say something like join or free book or some call to action here that tells people there's something else available and that will increase your conversion rate. Another, another missed opportunity here is on the about page. If we take a look at the about page, what we're going to see is Sam is speaking about herself a lot and that's, that's fine. But the fact is most people who read the about page, while they're somewhat interested in you and your story, what they're really interested in is themselves and their own problems. So I encourage you to fo focus the about page to be about them or you and them emphasis on them about what they need, how you can help them achieve their dreams, their results. Again, we could spend ages talking about this stuff and this isn't a copywriting video. So if you want me to go into more detail about how to write an effective about page, do tell me in the comments. So one more thing I would add to this about page is a call to action. Again, you guessed it to the email list, to the lead magnet, use it as an opportunity because your about page is going to be one of the most read pages on your website. So it makes sense to use it to really capitalize on that traffic, right? And when you build an email list like this, when you have this system running and people are just flooding into your, your email uh, database, well, that is going to be your, your really main source of traffic anytime you need it. So anytime you have a new piece of content, you have a new offer, a new affiliate link, anything, your email list is where you send that out to and all that traffic will go to wherever you want them to. Okay. So let's carry on taking a look at this website. So if we scroll down, let's take a look at a piece of content. This one, how to grow blueberry plants in pots. Now, what I would do, Sam, is I would optimize the crap out of this page for search engines. How I would do that is first of all, make sure that this, how to grow blueberry plants in pots, this key phrase is achievable. If it's too competitive, then I would move on and choose something less competitive. Secondly, I would make sure that you have the key phrase in the first paragraph. I would also put it maybe a couple of times through the, the body of the content. And then I would also make sure that it's in the last section as well. Also optimize your images with alt tags. And listen, this really isn't an SEO tutorial today. If you want me to create an extra video on how to optimize, optimize content for Google, let me know in the comments. I apologize if you can hear drilling outside. We've got workmen outside at the moment. It's quite distracting for me, but I apologize if you, if that audio is coming through. Okay. So if you want me to create more tutorials on how to SEO for Google, please tell me in the comments. I've been in the SEO industry since before it was called SEO way back in 1998. I first started optimizing websites. So I know a thing or two about it. Okay. Let's move on because to really find out if the chosen keywords are effective, we can use Ahrefs or SEMrush. I'm going to use SEMrush because it's 
the basic plan is freely available for anyone. So there's really no excuse to not do some basic keyword research. What I'm going to do is, whoops, pop in one of the keywords here. So let's go with this, how to grow blueberry plants in pots. I'm going to paste that in and then I'm going to search. So it's going to tell us roughly how, how much traffic and, and the difficulty is so. Okay. Now, interestingly, it gives us a global volume of 130, 30 for the U S a 20 for Australia, 20 for UK, and then 10 for Canada. Doesn't look particularly difficult. There's not a great deal of, uh, of traffic for this keyword. However, it's incredibly targeted. So that's a good thing. The thing about traffic is we don't need a massive amount of traffic. We just need the right traffic. So that's what I teach in, in many of my courses is how to get the right traffic. People are focused on volume because they think that's the key to success. And yes, the more traffic you have, the more money you make, but the more of the right type of traffic you have, the more money you will make quicker. Okay. So SEMrush is giving us uh, interesting results here. Now we can double check with multiple keyword research tools. So for example, I'm going to use word tracker to see what that says. And here it's given us a search volume of 558. Now, which, which one is right, which is wrong? Well, the fact is no keyword research tool is hundred percent accurate. They all have their own algorithm. They all make their own assessments based on a wide range of factors. And the fact is most of the time it's really about comparison. So it's taking a look at what else is happening in that niche. So for example, if we take a look down here, how to plant blueberries in pots, well, the search volume for, for this is much lower and then it drops even further still. And if we go back to SEMrush, we can see a similar pattern here. So in my opinion, is this a keyword worth going for? Absolutely. There is traffic here and it's probably profitable traffic. If we want to verify that, let's, let's head over to Google and do a really quick check. Oh, uh, and listen, if you want me to take a deep dive into how to do keyword research, tell me in the comments, I'll create separate tutorials on how to do that. Okay. So at Google, we've just put in the key phrase and what we want to see is some form of ads. So right at the very top, we can see that there are ad placements and it looks to be a profitable niche. Another thing we want to check is people also ask, we want to see this populated with similar questions. So we know that there is lots of interest in this niche. Now, this is really interesting. If we take a look at people, people also asked if we click this one, this arrow, watch what happens. We get this drop down a piece of content, but if we close it back up, we now have two more questions at the bottom. So this is going to help you to do even more keyword research. It's certainly going to give you topic ideas so you can have a, a mini hub on your website dedicated to answering these type of questions because you know that people are searching for these questions and you know that it will bring in traffic to your website. Okay. So let's say we've validated this keyword. We know it's, it's a good one. We're going to go ahead with it and we've optimized our piece of content for the search engines. What do we need to do now? First of all, I see this all the time. So we, we see people putting share on social media, uh, calls to action right here at the very top of web pages, get rid of them, move them further down because you've got to imagine each one of these is like a big exit button. So imagine you walk into a store, you have all these different sections of the store and the biggest signs that you see are for the exit. that is going to distract people. It's going to pull them away from this, from the sections that you want them 
to go to. So websites work in pretty much the same way. So you want people to stay on your website for as long as possible and take the action that leads to the most profit. So somewhere near the beginning of your content, you got to have a, a relevant call to action. So we looked at the lead magnet previously. If it's relevant, if that lead magnet is relevant to this piece of content, then we include it on the page. If it's not relevant to the piece of content, then we create a new lead magnet and we can have as many lead magnets as we need. So how I like to do it on some of my websites, if we have lots of different sections, different categories running, we just create different lead magnets for each category. And then that capitalizes on all the traffic. Now they all go into the same email list, but we apply a different tag depending on how they subscribed to the email list. And that determines how we treat them, the type of content that they receive. Okay. How much is it going to cost you to run this email list? Well, thankfully, you can build a system like this pretty much for free. I'm going to put a link in the description for you. You may have to scroll down a little bit for it, but you can actually get Aweber for free. I'll put a link in the description for you. Okay. So once we've got the entire system built out, and as you can see, there's really not that much to it, right? When we keep things simple, it works better. So once this is built out, all we have to do is start sending traffic to these content pages. Now, how do you do that? Well, I specialize in organic traffic. And in fact, I've managed to get over 30,000 website visitors to one of my websites for free every single day using free traffic methods. Even one of my students has used those same traffic methods to build a business worth over $2 million. And if you want to know the secret, if you want to know how he did it, I'll show you for free when you go to profitcopilot.com slash traffic, and it will work exactly with this type of system. Okay. Thank you for watching. And I will hopefully see you again very soon. Take care.